Hey guys, Reliver Dude here. All right, let's see what we got doing today. Uh, what I'm reloading here is a, a three gun load setup. Uh, like I said, I like to use 147 grain bullets on my three gun because it knocks the targets over. I really believe though, after I get done reloading these group of 147 grain um, bullets, I, then I'm probably not gonna use 147 grain bullets anymore. They just, it just seems that no matter what I do to try to get them to stay consistently accurate, it just doesn't work out. I mean, I'll put the same powder in every time and out of 100, 100 bullets, I'll have five flyers and I'll change it up and I'll be 100 bullets, five flyers. So it seems like no matter what load I use, it just uh, doesn't seem to want to work out. Uh, I use a little different technique when I throw my powder here. I go ahead and put the bullet on it and seat the bullet. Because I'm going to tell you, every time that I get started reloading, something happens where I got to get up. And I just don't like having powder and all my all my cases sitting around. Because sometimes it's a problem that I can be gone for five minutes and it's a problem that I can be gone for two hours. So I don't like doing that. I like to throw throw the powder charge and go ahead and just seat the bullet in it be done with it all right so but while i'm doing this i, th I thought i'd do a, a quick little video i had somebody ask me well about what they thought i liked better do i like single stage presses do i like the turret presses or do i like the progressive presses you know each his own you know i, I don't like the single stage press because i don't like having to adjust my die every time you know, I'm switching from, uh, you know, the resizing die and then I'm going to my, you know, bullet seating die or my crimp die or whatever. I don't like switching them in and out. You know, the only thing I basically use the single stage press anymore is just to decap and deprime. So, you know, my dirty brass so I can wash it. Uh, as far as progressive presses go, I like progressive presses. You know, I would love to have a, a Dillon progressive press. Every time I said I was going to buy one, though, I talked myself out of it. Because the problem with progressive presses are, you know, they're great if you sh if you load one caliber in that press. You know, if you load 9mm, you know, it's a great. You know, have it all set up for 9, just churn them out. Uh, you know, if you have 45, you have one press set up for 45, you can just turn churn those out. The problem comes to me is when you're having to switch in and switch out calibers. You know, to me, it takes too long to do that on a progressive press. Also, to me, it takes too long to switch those those changes out, like if I want to throw a different powder charge or if I want to use a different bullet. See, the problem is, you know, with the many competitions as I shoot in, I use a different bullet and a different grain powder for each each competition, you know. 147s, because I want to knock over the still heavy plates. I use, a, you know, a lighter load. When I'm shooting bullseye, you know, I want a lighter load that's more accurate. And, and for that particular gun, it, it prefers a lighter load. For my race guns and for my race events, I like a load that has a lot more powder in it. Uh, to me, the, when you have a lot more powder in your load, it cycles that slide a whole lot faster. And that banging of that slide uh, keeps it from uh, j jamming up. You know, you not have stove pipes or things like that because it's cycling so fast it goes ahead and kicks them out hard and then it slams in the other one hard and because of that you know in, in a race events you know you're pulling that trigger pretty dang fast and sometimes that bullet or the, the slide rate can't keep up because you didn't load the correct powder charge in there or you don't have a big enough bullet to, to cycle that you know fast enough but anyway you know so I, I don't like single stages because they take too long I don't like setting up my dies over and over and over now, I, on my single stage here, it is the, the breech, breech lock press where, you know, you can have the little adapters, and it does okay, but it's still, it's a single stage press. Turret presses, like I said, they're great. I would love to have a Dillon square, square, D, square B and have one set up just for, you know, 9 millimeter and one set up just for 45 because I shoot those mainly in competitions. But, you know, to me, a, a turret press is fine. You know, yes, it's a little bit slower than a, than a progressive, but you know, I can set it and basically forget it, load what I want to do. And then if I want to change the load, it's easy for me to change the load. It's simple to do in my opinion. 
you know, because everything's just right here handy and I don't have to take anything apart. I just have to do some minor adjustments. So that's why I prefer the turret press. Also, you know, people say, well, the speed, the speed. You know, I shoot a lot and, you know, I beg to, to differ that a lot of people, you know, God's blessed me in many ways and I, I would think that not very many people probably shoot as much as I shoot. There probably are. I mean, there's a guy named Hickok 45. He probably will shoot, out shoots me and <laughs> I shoot. But anyway, the deal is, is the, the turret press loads them fast enough for me. You know, you can go broke, you know, reloading bullets. You know, if, you, if you're reloading, a, you know, 500 an hour, how many are you going to reload? I mean, you're going to reload 10,000 in two days and, and be done. And me, the enjoyment of reloading is the reloading. You know, if if I was going so fast that I couldn't sit here and reload, then what's the purpose in reloading? I mean, if you're just going to be a bullet manufacturer, be a bullet manufacturer. Now, like I said, on some of my events, you know, I, on the 9mm 45, I wouldn't mind having a, a square DLB, but for me, this is fast enough. I mean, it works, it works fine. I, it's easy to change out. So to me, a turret press is the best. You know, but each is own. You know, everybody has their different ways of doing it. And also, a lot of, like I said, a lot of it reloading is the enjoyment of the reloading. It's not to see how fast you can kick them out. It's just the time invested in it. I mean, it's not like super fun. You're not going to get all giddy and, and the warm fuzzies or anything like that. But the time invested in it, you know, it, it is fun. You know, and, and just to throw this out there, you know, if I can reload 500 and let's say, Let's be realistic here. If I can reload, let's say, 100 rounds of bullet, bullets, ammo, cartridges, if I can reload that in 30 minutes, or I can come in here and I can spend, you know, an hour, hour and a half doing it, you know, that's just an hour and a half that I, I don't have to spend with listening to the wife talk and listen to her talk about her nails and her hair and how her sister is doing and how her, <laughs> you know, I get to come in here and I get to spend some quality time alone. And I'm here to tell you there, you know, like right now I'm on, I'm on vacation. House is quiet. You know, they all went shopping. You know, it, it's awesome. I enjoy my quiet private time. So, so if I'm at the reload table, you know, everybody knows it's just kind of leave me alone. That's my way of unwinding for the day or, you know, or getting my thoughts organized for the next day. So why would I want to turn out, you know, what I in 15 minutes, what I can do in an hour and a half? <laughs> because, you know, I enjoy this private time alone. I sit here and stare out my windows, you know, watch the dogs run, watch the rabbits out there, you know, just do whatever. So sometimes speed is not the most important thing in life. And, you know, and I, I you know, I'm here to tell you, you know, when you're young, everything, you want to fast, fast, fast. You want instant gratification, instant gratification. But I'm here to tell you, there's there's nothing better than just the slow pace of reloading some ammo and enjoying your day. All right, guys. Well, there's that video. We're going to continue on with the, the reloading. Uh, one of the guys who had me question about what I reload for uh, on the 147s. I'm going to go ahead and share that with you right now. Let me see if I can find my load data. That is not the right one. Okay, and like we all know, you know, use this at your own risk. Okay, I like to use uh, four grains of the XP100, the CapX100. It's also supposed to be equivalent to Winchester Auto Comp, and I'm going to say yes, they are. They're pretty similar powders. Uh, my overall case length, I like to do 1.00. You know, so 1.00 with 147 grain bullet. You know, these are the, the extreme round nose is what they are. I'm currently using the Winchester primers. I'm going to do a video over primers while we're doing the reloading series on the 9mm. And you all learn a little bit about primers and why you insert primers for certain loads. You know, these are these are mainly shot out of a Glock. You know, the Glock uh, firing pin has strikes it pretty hard. So, But we're going to go into all that later on the, on the primer section. But I use a 147 grain bullets loaded at 1.1000 with four four grains of powder of the capex. Uh, it works out great for me. I mean, that's the best 147 grain load that I've I've came up with with this bullet. Now, if I went to a more uh, uh, better bullet, I mean, I don't like that term better bullet because who's to say something's better than other. But if I went to a Sierra or a you know, 147 grain, or I went to a Hornady 147 grain, I would expect a whole lot better results than these, but 
These are the ones that I use because it's more of a, a range, a range type of ammo. So, all right, guys, use that information at your own risk. I do appreciate all the new subs. I do appreciate everybody watching. If you have any questions about what I use, just feel free to ask. I'm glad to see Bear back. I, I've kind of missed Bear. I don't know where he's been, but I thought I'd throw that in there. All right, guys, uh, thanks again.